this first slide is a little dreary looking, right? It's kind of like a, a black and white kind of picture here. And if, if, I know there's some young people in here, but if many of you remember The Wizard of Oz, right? The movie The Wizard of Oz. And when I was a young kid, I was terrified of The Wizard of Oz, right? And as I got older, I started to recognize that in The Wizard of Oz, there was a lot of good messages that came out of it. But if you remember in the beginning, it was in black and white. And there's a lot of stories behind that, whether because color came in after the movie was started. But my interpretation of that, it was, it was black and white because at that point in the movie, it was a dark place. There was a lot of tough things, tough things going on. You know, the weather was bad, Dorothy was lost, and all that kind of stuff. And then, ultimately, it went on to Oz, right? And it was a colorful piece to it, right? So, in that movie, right, the goal was to find their path to get to Emerald City, right? And get there. And um, that's going to be the key here, right? So, you're going to have to find your path to get you through this process. So, in a couple of minutes, you're going to see some nice, um, colorful slides, but... I want to make sure this is working because it wasn't really, there you go. So one of the things I would like to do is um, just go back a little bit in history, right? So the first thing is, obviously, the closing of Indian Point has got to be one of the district's biggest challenges that they've ever faced, right? So when I was here 20 years ago, there was always a discussion about potentially closing, potentially closing, but now we know this is actually, actually, actually going to be happening, right? And I do want to recognize and commend the board, the administration, the staff, and the school community because you've taken it head on, right? You know what's happening, and we've got to take some steps to make sure that we get us to where we want to be at the end of the, end of the path here. So let's take a moment to look at the mission statement of the district. So what I'd like you to do is just take a moment, reflect on this, and then I'm going to ask the board to just point out a couple of key phrases or key words in this mission statement that resonate with you. Read through it. Okay. Anyone on the board of the administration want to talk to a couple of key phrases in this mission statement? This is the interactive part. <laughs> I think we're not a bunch of them here, but this is very well written. Probably done a number of years ago, but um, definitely well written. So, someone? I, I really like the diverse, effective instructional strategies and resources. I think that's that really speaks to me as far as what we're trying to do with providing a diverse way of instructing children at all different levels and you know in having a variety of resources and strategies to help those kids succeed i like the uh, fully engaged supportive community mm -hmm. i think it's really important for anyone's education mm -hmm. you have to have a community behind them that's a good point because this process we're really going to try and engage the entire school community for sure anyone else want to rigorous articulated curriculum but it's it's not going to change i think that's the key is it, what we're hoping to do is have none of this change with indian point i mean that it's this is what we were five years ago and ten years ago but we're hoping and and yes we've evolved and probably become more diverse and, and changed some of the you know the the maybe the uh, the emphasis if you will on certain things but i think that needs to stay the same we need all of these things after Indian Point too, so it can't change. It's we need to use this. Mm -hmm. So you obviously read my notes that I hand oh. wrote in here. No. But, um, <laughs> but as we move forward, all these in this years process, together, John. Well, there you go. Yeah. As we move forward in this process, though, this is what's going to have to guide you when you're making your decisions, right? So a lot of hard work went into writing this document, and if you believe in it, and this is the mission of the district, regardless of the decision that's made, this has got to be what guides you as you move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go back in. There you go. Back in history a little bit, right? So back, as Joe mentioned before, I've been working with the board for a number of years, but this is the actual PowerPoint presentation cover from back in uh, 2018. Um, one of the things that we did during that summertime is we read the book, Our Iceberg is Now Better. And if you're not familiar with the book, it's basically about, it's a, obviously a picture story about penguins that are on this iceberg, and beneath the surface there's a lot of cracks going on, right? And on the top, everything looks great, but underneath, it's really not that good. So they had to go and start to make some changes, right? They had to decide what they were going to do. They had to have people buy into it, and then they actually had to send people out to start looking for alternate possibilities than that iceberg before it actually became a problem. So we talked about this book in the, the, in, during the summer retreat, and then from there, um, what the author does in the book is they give really eight steps for a successful change, right? Especially ones that are very difficult. So the first successful change, right, or the first step is to create a sense of urgency, right? Well, the closing of Indian Point really gave us our urgent message that we had to figure out. So with that, what we had to decide as, with the board is, 
What do people know about if Indian Point closes down? What is it going to do to our district? And what's it going to do to this community, right? So I know there was a lot of concern about people moving out of town, people's houses going off the market, not being able to sell their homes, enrollment dropping, skyrocketing taxes. These were all the things that the board started to wrestle with as they knew that Indian Point was closing down. So we didn't really need to create a sense of urgency. So what we did was we recognized, and if anyone's been a part of the swap process, I know some of the board members are, right? But based on Indian Point closing, what are some of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats that could be potentially impacting this district, right? So real easily, we can point out the weaknesses and the threats. But one of the things I need to commend the board and the administration on is they really spent a lot of time figuring out what were some of the strengths with Indian Point closing down, which almost sounds counterintuitive, right? And what are some of the opportunities that happen as a result of Indian Point closing down, right? So it was a lot of hard work, but, you know, again, Finding weaknesses and threats, they were there. We knew that, right? But finding some strengths and opportunities was really important. So from there, the board developed an action plan. And I just wanted you guys to just review this for a couple of minutes. I'm not going to read all the bullets to you, but you should have it in front of you. Just let's look at the action plan that was developed in 2018 and 19, all right? Based off of the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the perceived threats that were coming to the, coming to the district's way. All right, so one of the things that were part of the eight steps was to celebrate some short-term wins, right? So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes going through some of the things that the district has been able to accomplish. And again, I just want to congratulate the board, the administration, the staff, the community, because a lot of great things have happened. And I just want to point out that getting that logo on that little medal there <laughs> took me about two hours to you know, <laughs> this celebration. So, That's a win. But I wanted to make That's sure you had it on there, right? So, so anyhow, let's talk about some of the things that happened, right? So... You, get it, you, you, got, you got stars on all of these, right? So we're going to talk about the communication um, plan. So I took a picture of your website, and if you haven't been to the website, um, the community page is outstanding. There's a ton of information on there, right? You have a video, you have podcasts, you have communications back and forth from the superintendent, you have news articles and all kinds of resources on the website that allow someone from the outside to really get a good understanding of what's happening and some up-to-date information really critical in this process, right? Because again, the board is committed to engaging as many people as possible in this decision, the decision process moving forward, but being as transparent as possible, right? So this, this website is phenomenal. It's got a lot of resources in it. And I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty comfortable um, that the district won an award for some of this communication stuff, right? The national award for um, PR people. So mm -hmm. congratulations on that. And this is the card that they spoke to in the one of the action plans. Again, I'm not going to give you tons of examples, but I know the card just came out recently. The most yeah, updated the board card, has the board a hard has copy. That. Yep. And again, I want to go back to the mission. And, and it's always been the case ever since I've been here that the students here have a wonderful education. They get a wonderful education here based on what you're able to provide them and the wonderful staff. So this is a way for you to look at your accomplishments in a way that really is, is amazing from the outside looking at you want to speak to the card at all, Jeff? Yeah, this is, um, we began using this uh, infographic as a, uh, an advocacy tool. It began with some of our successes at the top and then some uh, of the issues with Indian Point closing uh, at the bottom, some, some graphics which we'll see a little bit later. Uh, but we wanted to expand it to, to celebrate the return on investment. We are one of the uh, unique communities in Westchester where the vast majority of our community uh, no longer has students in the district. And when you are a taxpayer and you're not using the service in which the greatest amount of your taxes go to, go to fund, the public school, it was critically important that uh, our entire community, but especially that population, understood, understood the return on investment. And uh, we've used this in, in every, every advocacy meeting. We've used it with the Chamber of Commerce, the Montrose Business Association, we have piles of them. Uh, we just had big uh, poster size uh, cards printed that will be displayed in schools and public spaces. Uh, and it's important that the community understands um, some of the data sets that this board and organization value, which none of them, not one of them, get reported in a newspaper or by the state education department. Uh, and it's important that folks understand what that return on investment yields. Thank you. 
So um, the next piece is that one of the weaknesses we identified um, back in 2018 was the need to have a comprehensive district study. So again, I'm going to ask um, Joe Hoffreiter to speak to this, but a study was done. This yep. is the so uh, in uh, November, November 6th, uh, in fact, a 80-plus page um, report was uh, published, provided to the board and the community about options the board could consider uh, with regards to Indian Point. Uh, we knew that we needed to look at some, uh, identify some operational efficiencies. We're not the only district in our immediate region who has gone through uh, discussions around school closure or redistricting or redrawing boundary lines or organizing students differently. Because the goal was, uh, coming out of our retreats and the commitment of the board, um, was not to decimate program. Uh, because it's our programs that make our district uh, desirable and a destination. So the idea was, can we organize students differently uh, to find efficiencies of scale so that uh, while students may be going to a different school or may be on a bus a little bit longer or bell times may shift, uh, the integrity of our programs remain intact. There were five recommendations uh, that came out of the study. One of the five was, was to do nothing, was to just leave things the way they are because we've always done it that way and uh, really haven't challenged uh, that organization. But there were four other uh, recommendations, two of which uh, included closing the school. And uh, for many, many reasons, which we don't need to get into again tonight, but the board deliberated uh, over the course of two meetings back in uh, January on why closing the school um, would be a, a very short-sighted and short-term decision. And we don't have to look far uh, to find neighboring or regional districts who have closed the school to try to achieve short-term gains, and, and I would suggest that they're uh, perhaps regretting those decisions now. Uh, so the board uh, decided to eliminate options which recommended closing the school, uh, which lead us to um, keep our schools or three elementary schools organized the way they are, uh, or to explore a grade level center, which is um, basically a Princeton plan. Okay, thank you. All right, so again, um, since the very beginning, the board and the administration has committed to making sure that um, and maintain high quality programs and services here in the district. So um, just to reemphasize that point, um, this is an email that went out to the parents on December 6, 2019 from uh, Mr. Hockrider. And I just want to point out one of the paragraphs in there again. I won't read to you, but again, it speaks to the 100% commitment to the parents and the students that they're going to provide them with the best educational opportunities here in your country. All right, so the last piece here is talking about the, you know, one of the threats back, to, back when this first started was not really understanding what the ramifications were for the funding and the closing of Indian Point and, and what does that mean to the school district, what, financially what is it going to mean, and the need for advocacy. So again, I'm going to ask Mr. Hockwright to just speak to this next two slides here. Yeah, this is a slide that uh, we have shared ad nauseum, uh, basically within a week after Indian Point closed. Uh, or announce their closure, I'm sorry, uh, Enrique was able to uh, go through our, our pilot document. A pilot document with Indian Point is basically a financial contract of what Indian Point was going to pay had they remained open, which is the blue line, and what Indian Point will begin paying as they go through the closure process. Uh, we had a lot of foresight back in two, uh, 2014 when we were negotiating this pilot uh, to make sure that there was an offering, uh, because if a normal business just uh, shuttered their operations, uh, that pilot could very well go to zero. So we wanted to have a safety net to make sure that if Indian Point, in fact, uh, closed within the time frame of the expiration of the pilot, which goes to 2025, um, that we had a softer landing. The gap is $60.5 million of anticipated revenue versus what we're going to receive. And since that point, we have learned a great deal about how to recover that $60.5 million. I'll give a separate presentation when we're done here tonight, uh, giving some uh, new information about the cessation mitigation fund. We've had uh, 
presentations at this uh, uh, here at the Board of Education meeting each of the last two years about business development in the district because if we can uh, turn some undesirable property into uh, des more desirable property and create what we call more rateables, uh, the more folks who are uh, can contribute to the tax base lessens the burden on the rest of the residents. Uh, we have uh, bills that have been in committee um, in terms of trying to create additional revenue from the federal government. Uh, Nita Lowy has sponsored a number of bills and one has made it out of committee, uh, which is being discussed. Uh, we received a little more than $600,000 of unanticipated revenue through the Westchester County sales tax increase. Uh, the uh, county legislature and ultimately the governor approved a 1% increase for an 18-month trial period. Uh, that brought us $600,000, more than $600,000 of anticipated revenue that uh, certainly was was uh, not being discussed when Indian Point announced their closure. And, of course, what we're here to discuss tonight is how we move forward with the cost analysis. Okay. So, um, again, looking back at the eight steps, though the district has done some amazing work over the last year and a half, one of the things that you see here, I, I highlighted in red there, is you can't let up, right? So. They've gotten some of the information that they needed to start making some decisions. So at this point, they have to start picking on the next phase of this project, right? So what are the next steps? All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this process, right? We're going to look at what's the urgent thing that we're dealing with right now, and then how we're going to get to the point where we've made some decisions and see our visions coming through. So we already know the closing of Indian Point. We have the significant uh, increase to the school taxes over the next couple of years. But the real critical issue, again, is how do we maintain the quality programs um, that we have here based on these fiscal constraints that they're, they're facing, right? All right, so again, the board wants this to be an inclusive process. So they're going to pull together the guiding team. And the guiding team is going to be made up of the, the, the different groups represented here. So Mr. Hockrider just spoke about this, right? So it's these are the two options that the board has accepted to take on. One is looking at the Princeton plan, or the other one is looking at status quo. And I have that asterisk in there because obviously if we just keep the schools in the same way that they are, there are going to have to be some hard looks at the staffing and the programs that we offer in order to make sure that we can meet our budget as a district. So the how? We're going to have, again, I don't want to get too much. I'll be talking about the Community World Cafes and the Stakeholder Committee meetings in, in, in a little bit. But again, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on over the next couple of months to try to come to the decision here. One of the keys, again, a lot of repeating here, but the ability to participate. We want, definitely want people to feel comfortable sharing ideas. We're going to collect a lot of data and information. And then obviously, once we've designed a plan, I and mean, we decide on a plan, we're going to have to start doing some future program planning, and, and that's going to take some work. And I don't want to read everything to you, but again, important during this process is for people to feel valued and recognized, because there's going to be some, a lot of hard work going on. Um, so we want to make sure we keep, keep that in mind. And again, we don't want to let up. We've got to be persistent. People have to stay involved. You can't be floating in and out of meetings, right? Um, you have to be able to attend the important meetings. And the real thing is that you have to commit to this process and stick to the timeline. Because you'll see in a few minutes, I'm going to go through the timeline with you. The goal is to have this plan in place September 2021, right? But in order for that to happen, there has to be some decisions made, and they're going to make them in September, and again, I'll show it to you later, so that you can gear up the budget for that school year to be ready to go so you can have things in place when the students come back in 2021. Okay? So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to go through the timeline with you. And just to point out a couple of key things. I don't know if people in the audience have this, but the board should have this in front of them at least. Mm -hmm. right, so I don't know if it must be difficult to read that back there, but I'm just going to point out a couple of things on here. Got to catch up to my slides here. So one of the things that, and I don't know if Mr. Ockrady would like to talk about it, we've already, we've already started to look at putting together the stakeholder 
Committee. So you want to just speak to that real quick? Yeah, we're uh, going to follow a model that uh, the district has used with strategic planning and other uh, opportunities to engage the community. And, and there are going to be three groups within the stakeholder group. Uh, one will be staff, where we'll uh, invite the participation um, on this committee work of, of some of our teachers and our administration. There will be a group representing parents. Uh, that will be a conversation that I'm having on Friday with our six PTAs. And then there will be uh, community members, uh, folks who represent community organizations within our school district. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Montrose Business Association, um, the Indian Point Task Force, the Village of Buchanan has done some work and have had some steering steering committees around uh, some tough decisions they have to make. So we have some well-established, um, legitimate community uh, organizations that um, certainly need to participate that will give different voice and give different perspective to the process. And it's deliberately written as a draft document now in case the board would like to make some kind of changes to this. But some of the key dates in here, um, if you look at the, uh, the, the slide in front of you here, um, late March or early April is the plan to have our first stakeholder meeting. Um, it'll be probably an all-day event uh, just to really go through the, uh, the stakeholders, what they're going to be doing their charge. Um, then we have in April and May, we're going to ask some of the people from the stakeholders committees to go out and do site visits to school districts that have the Princeton plan. So they can go in there and meet with staff there, find out what the good parts about it, what are the tough parts about it, but to really get a good understanding of how the Princeton plan works. Um, and then in May, we're going to host a series of uh, what we call World Cafe models. And again, I'll speak that a little bit differently, but that'll be in May. So it's a pretty aggressive timeline. And then we're also going to have an online survey. Um, for people who can't attend the meetings, they'll have an opportunity to answer a series of questions to give their input. And again, what we're going to do is for all these things, we're going to collect all the data and all the information, and we're going to provide that to the board so when they have to make the decision in September, they're going to have as much information as possible. So then when we move on to the next half of the uh, time frame, um, in September, early September, um, during the summertime, we'll put together a document, a white paper, so to speak, with all the information. We're going to provide that with the board. I suggest to the board and maybe have a special meeting that night, like a workshop meeting mm -hmm. just on this topic, so we can get through this document and you can have some opportunity to really ask questions and discuss it. And then the goal would be at the end of the, um, the second meeting in September um, to select a plan moving forward. Again, whether it's keeping things status quo or moving towards the Princeton plan, but that's the goal. Now, Enrique, um, originally on the schedule, I put January for the uh, budget process, but I'm sure you're probably starting on the budget process shortly right after that meeting, so it'll probably moved yeah. up if you know what's going on, right? So if you hear about it in September, the board has made a decision, you have to make some changes. It'll probably be sooner than that. But clearly, the big picture here is that we have the decision made, and Ricky has to build a budget that's going to reflect the decision, all right? And then, again, just to reemphasize, the plan is to be implemented in September of 2021, all right? So the, so the vote on the budget then would be in July of well, so you know, it'll be yeah. May yeah. of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So if we create a, a budget based on a decision, it would have to be voted on in May of 2021. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the community, the community approves the budget, and it would yeah. um, within the budget you have um, you have programs. So right. there would be a budget that if we adopt the Princeton plan, students would be organized differently. We would have the white paper. We would have. Um, Perhaps new programs that are that you know we didn't think of because the students are organized differently. Uh, if we decide not to adopt the Princeton plan, there would be a different program budget in terms of what staffing would look like or opportunities. So, if that, so how does that fit in? Because I would assume that's that's a key date that we need to have in here. Well, it's it's built in through our budget process. So by right. by making a decision as early as September. Um, we, we usually start our budget process in January when we receive information from the state. Yeah. We can, w with this information, if the savings, if we believe the savings are significant enough, um, we can begin that process in September on the budget end, and then we can actually begin the implementation of identifying uh, what school will house which grade levels, how we're going to move people, how we're going to identify who teaches where, and then ultimately that will lead to uh, a budget that will have a tax calculation, which the public will uh, vote on in May. So, all, all so let's say um, there was a decision, a decision not to be status quo. All that work would have to be done in the summer of 2021 
to implement, or you're going to no. Start? We would make a decision in September of 2020, and we would have okay. 10 months to get ready. The okay. physical work would be done during the summer, mm -hmm. like shifting people that's, around. That's what all. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So the physical work in the summer, so that so the plan implementation is. It's real. That's that's your goal. Even during like breaks. Yeah, too. I mean, we okay. need to identify who's going to teach where, um, a plan to physically move classrooms or materials, which Anthony will work on in terms of um, how that would work with either our folks or a moving company or, or what have you. Okay. Thank you. So we talked about the uh, district stakeholder committee, and this is the membership on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side is some of the things that that committee is going to be charged with. A couple of key things in here. We really want them to understand the issue and study the problems and the different things that are facing the district, because that's important as they start going out and maybe doing site visits or as they start to provide some feedback um, in smaller groups of the stakeholder committee. It's important that they really truly understand what the issue is. So you can envision the first meeting. A lot of time in the beginning is going to be laying out all the different issues facing the district, the financial issues and, and the, the future issues that could be potentially hitting the district. The other thing is because it's a committee of different groups, what we want them to be is well versed to be able to go back to their constituents and explain exactly what's going on. Again, we're not trying to hide anything. Everything's got to be transparent, right? So if you're representing one of these groups, if you're an administrator, and not all the administrators can make the meeting, it's, it's the job of those administrators to go back and share with their group what's happening, get some feedback from them. Same with the staff members, same with community members and parents, right? So I would imagine that there would be report backs to PTA meetings, for example, from those people who are on the stakeholder committee. Critical piece to this, right? Now, the World Cafe model, and I'm sure there's some staff members who've been a part of this, we've used this many times, very successful, right? So if you had a meeting with 40 people and you asked everybody to give their opinion, a lot of times a couple of people monopolize the conversation. Sometimes people are afraid to speak in front of the, a large group. So what we do is we break them into small groups. We ask three or four essential questions, and that's one of the things we'll be working on with the stakeholder committee, is to come up with those questions. And then what happens is someone sits there and literally records everything that's said, right? And that information then gets put into notes that are going to be shared with the board. After the first question, people get up and are dispersed into different tables again, so they're not always with the same people, so they hear different points of view. The person who stays at the table and who's the anchor taking the notes will explain to the group when they come to the table for question number two what the first group said. So it gives them like a little feedback on what they said, and then some people say, hey, well, my table talked about this a little bit. And then we go on to the next question. All right, and then they get up again, move on, and if it's done right, you could be at three different tables and be with totally different people each time, right? So it's an important piece of this because really, again, we want to hear from everybody, right? And some people are less comfortable in a large setting like this as I am. So um, less comfortable. So how is the final decision going to be made? We spoke to this a little bit, but um, again, the board is going to receive a lot of data and feedback, some of it which is going to be coming from the committees that we spoke about in the different meetings but also some of the stuff that the district has to provide to them, right? So uh, obviously Enrique is going to be responsible for a lot of this with the financial impact on our district, but I know that there's already a look at the transportation study, so as we looked at the Princeton plan as a possible model, there's going to be some implications to the transportation. So, uh, you know, route runs, do we need new, more buses, more drivers? All that stuff is going to be provided to the board, so they, have a, they can make an informed decision on the, the financial side of it. And then also, obviously, they want to make sure that the educational side of it is, is, is strong as well. So. Um, the feedback from the committee on their site visits if, if the Princeton plan is what people are leaning towards or not, um, that's going to be valuable. So that's going to happen in early September, and then at the second meeting in, in uh, September, they would choose a plan and direction to move forward. Make sense? All right, at this point, if the board has any questions, comments? I have one more question. So, <coughs> what about contingency planning? So, you know, we can plan a lot of great things. But, you know, it's very rare that a plan goes exactly as planned. Mm -hmm. So in the event, let's say the budget doesn't pass, what is our contingency plan? Um, I, I, if we're not getting the realization that we thought we were going to get based on the original analysis, well, that, what's the contingency that, plan? That's why we're going to make that decision by September. Okay. Because if, if the numbers or, and, and I don't want to just talk about numbers, if the feedback from this group and uh, in concert with uh, some of the cost savings estimates or not, return. if the return is not there, then we would have all academic year of, of starting in September 20 to say, okay, what what now? What, 
what alternatives are there? So contingent planning is, I, I think of, and probably Enrique thinks of a contingent budget that basically the state comes and takes over your expenses uh, as well as well as some of your revenues. But that will be a decision by moving this up to September of 2020. If we choose not to uh, move forward with the Princeton plan for any number of reasons, um, we'll have next year to decide, okay, how are we going to, uh, what other opportunities are there to, uh, to tighten the belt? My concern is more along, you know, what we're getting is a cost estimate. So it's someone who's got expertise in this, who's objective, who could very well be wrong. And we find out, let's say, in the first year that we're not realizing the expense savings that we thought we were going to get. Are, are we stuck? Do we have a contingency plan? Do we just keep going with it? You know, those are the kinds of things that I think we should be thinking about, like what could go wrong? And how would we deal with all those things that could go wrong? Well, I think part of it is the big picture. I mean, that it's not just a numbers thing. It's that we're, again, having, you know, all of this input and having and looking at other schools that have done it and looking at, um, and again, the, the return isn't just about financial. I mean, it has to work for the students, too. It has to be something that, you know, that it's it's more than just the money, that, that it has to work, that the students are getting the education and the opportunity. And again, that's that's the whole thing, is what's going to allow us to continue giving the students what they what we currently and more you know what you know keeping programs whether it's a financial whether it's structural whether it's you know given our the loss of finances or and will the Princeton plan do that or you know and, and it, it, by doing the Princeton plan will it save enough money to help us to do that or if we wind up staying in status quo what choices do we have to make I mean that's what this next years about well, that's exactly um, my point so what so let's say we realize the finances but the students are not getting the benefits that we thought or there were unintended unintended consequences or do benefits we, or benefits <laughs> do we have a plan to address those it will be adjusted case? i mean that's all i'm saying is, it, is we mm -hmm. should be thinking about what could go mm -hmm. wrong because sure, things will point. go wrong absolutely mm -hmm. and we need to be prepared mm -hmm. to address those when they go wrong so, you know, I, I think the plan is great, and, you know, we've been working on this for years. But I think that's the point of looking at everything, right. not yes. just the financial, but, again, looking at other schools. You know, that's the site visits, looking at and, and all of yeah. that. Yeah, what were your challenges? What went wrong? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. a perfect thing to ask exactly. for site visits. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, can or, or, you know, if you could have done, done something differently, what would you have done or in the rollout? And, and hopefully we'll learn from there their their wisdom and their mistakes yes yeah, and, and I think that's all the yeah. great part of the plan I think what's missing in this is we don't have what what if something goes wrong we did all the planning we did all the research we did all our due diligence and something still goes wrong well then we modify uh, it's again we we look to the we look to the you know to the to the ex to the you know the people who you know the the resources, the the BOCES, mm -hmm. the you know these other superintendents, the the teachers. Do we look to those to see how we can mitigate, you know, this unintended consequence? Um, I mean, why, that's life. First, of, I mean, frankly, but I mean, and there's going to be bumps, but hopefully it'll just be small bumps. But again, I think by doing all this work ahead of time, we'll we'll be able to minimize some of those. Right. We should certainly keep that in mind as yeah. we're going through this process. Yeah. I mean, going back to the silly Wizard of Oz reference, right? You know, it wasn't a clear path, right, to get to the Animal mm -hmm. City, right? There's was, there was a lot of things that happened along that way that made it difficult. And you can imagine Sorry. it's going to be the same thing regardless of the decision that you make, right? So if you make a decision to move to the Princeton plan or not, you're going to make some changes. And in the first couple of years, you're going to you're going to have to morph yourself to correct those changes. Right? Well, if Dorothy had a gas mask and a fire retardant suit, yeah. she would have gotten there much faster. <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you think about what could go wrong, mm -hmm. you know, be prepared. That's that's all I'm saying. Is that, let's think Forward about things. Here. Yeah, there you right? go. <laughs> so I have more of a comment than a question. In our school district stakeholder committee, we do have board listed there. But um, the board has plenty of opportunities to discuss this in public and to talk about what we're finding. What we're really interested in is what our community thinks and how they feel about these changes that are being proposed. So for that portion of the process, we're going to be more observers. We're not going to be active participants in that stakeholder committee meeting. There'll be a lot of, as the timeline shares, a lot of free flow information coming back and forth. 
There'll be uh, many updates of PTA meetings, which board members uh, have uh, adopted a school and attend. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to, to uh, World Cafe receive model updates. Will be yeah. a, an opportunity for board members to participate in a more direct way if they so chose. And then I think January, uh, June 3rd, there'll be an opportunity for us to come back and share some of the results from all the different meetings that happened, and then we'll have the summer to write up the, the white paper. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, for thank you very much. Thank you.